The Pope of the Holy See. The Pope's address had a gentle bite, urging an end to toxic politics, but appealing to the best of America. In the land of the free, at the home of the brave. Minnesota Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar was part of a small delegation serving as the Pope's escort, meeting briefly with Francis, who blessed them. And just to be that close to him, people often say that you kind of feel this grace uh, and wisdom, and that was true. Democratic Representative Keith Ellison, the first Muslim congressman, said the Pope's call to action went beyond religion or politics. He didn't mention a piece of legislation or even a policy or even a candidate. What he talked about are core values, in my view, and he left it up to us to work those things out. The Pope's wide-ranging remarks could be considered political, but Republican Tom Emmer, a Catholic, said they were anything but. In between the lines, what I heard was, regardless of your political persuasion, uh, America has an important place in the world, and you're going to have to lead. Klobuchar's papal visit guest was Timothy Marks, the president of Catholic Charities in Minnesota. He called the emotion in the room overwhelming as the Pope stood with lawmakers under the carving in God We Trust. Which really says we are all one. Our faith, our politics, our personalities mixed together and we all have an obligation to use the tools and gifts that we have to advance the common good. President, final question. Yes, sir. You said famously, when you looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes, you saw his soul. Yeah. When you look into Benedict XVI's eyes, what do you see? God. Good way to end the interview. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Hello and welcome everyone to another reading of Code Word Barbalon. We are well into the book today, and today is Saturday, Sabbath day, and it is May 26th, 2018, and we are in chapter 45, Vicarious Filii Day, or D.I., I think it's pronounced, having to do with deity. Quote, 600, three score, and six, unquote. We are on page 447 under the subtitle, What Does Vicarious Filii Day Have to Do with 666? And Jörg Glissman and Michael there in Germany are joined with me. And welcome. Thank you, Brett, for the invitation and uh, picking up the time to come to the table for doing another reading of this wonderful book, Code Word Babylon. 666, Danger in the Vatican, the Sons of Loyola and their Plans for World Domination. I'm just listening to Tom Fress reading this book in 2010, and I can tell you, everybody who did not listen to that archive in First Amendment Radio misses out a lot. I thought that we were doing quite a pretty job with reading this book, but then they knew you, Tom, and then I'm always oh, asking please, myself, oh, don't, did we mention this? Don't did mix we mention it up, that? Jerk. <laughs> don't do it. Uh, no, it's just it's it's just an advice for people that when uh, when they want to hear different yeah. people talking on the same subject, there's nothing wrong with uh, subscribing to the archives of First Amendment oh, Radio no, and no. get a hold on the uh, on the readings that Tom did from the end of June 2010 on on Code Word Babylon, and uh, you know there's one very interesting point that I didn't think we bring up yet. But did you know that Tom Fress is mentioned in the beginning of uh, book two, Code Word Babylon, The Antichrist is a Woman? Because he reviewed this book, Code Word Babylon, in a very, very positive way, and the author is citing Tom Fress in the beginning of part two of this second book. Yep, yep, that's right. So when even the author gives credit to Tom Fress and his, um, let's say, um, meaning, his judgment on the book, while reading the book, he still wasn't done that when, when he spoke these words, I think it is very profound to tell our listeners that uh, next to our reading, they can go to First Amendment Radio's archives in 2010 and have a listen at how Tom read that book. You know, a subject like this, you can never get too much information. And Tom does a, does a different reading than we do here. And that's fine. 
because I'm not a parent of Tom. Neither is Brett, neither is Michael. We are doing our our thing, and Tom does his thing. Well, and that's but you the point, as a listener. Yeah. Yeah. But you as a listener, you have the opportunity to compare the two things together and take the best out of the two, and even advance or uh, enhance your uh, knowledge about the subject that we are speaking of in this book. So, just a little advice of mine. But uh, let's uh, give Michael a chance also to say something. Yes, hi guys, I'm still there. Good. <laughs> All right, Michael, good to hear your voice. I just have picked up the page 447 and yeah, I'm curious to get more knowledge. So please let us begin. Good. What does vicarious filii di have to do with 603 score and 6? As we saw above, in 1915 the Catholic Church admitted that vicarious filii di was quote-unquote inscribed in the Pope's mitre. And prior to that, in the November 15, 1914 issue of Our Sunday Visitor, page 3, someone wrote in to the editor asking whether 666 had anything to do with the Pope's Latin title, Vicarius Filii Dei. The Inquirer quoted Revelation 13, verse 18, which says, quote, Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and 6, unquote. In other words, the inquirer was suggesting that the Pope's title, Vicarius Filii Dei, added to 603 score and 6. And by the way, while we're at it, the Bible verse. Let him that hath understanding count, count the number of the beast. What is a beast in biblical terms? It is a kingdom, right? A nation, right? That is the Vatican. And it is the number of a man, the man who sits on top of that beast. So can there be any doubt that the Pope is 603 score and 6? Can there be any doubt that the Pope is the man of perdition, the son, uh, the son of perdition, the man of sin, the little horn? All these names attributed to the Antichrist of the Bible? No, there is not. And here comes one of the little problems that I have with reading this book. I cannot see P.D. Stewart using the term Antichrist and papacy or Pope in the same sentence. Why? I do it all the time. It is pivotal to understand. It is absolutely crucial to understand that the papacy from the first to the current, even until the last pope, until Jesus Christ returns, is the biblical, historical, and prophetic antichrist. It is pivotal to understand and expose the futurist agenda of the Jesuit order, which this whole book is all about. The Jesuits, right? It's called the Sons of Loyola and their plans for world domination. So the biggest lie since the Garden of Eden they put out is that the Pope is not the Antichrist. And we are talking here about 603 score and 6. No, I want to talk about the Antichrist. You know, I don't care about 603 score and 6. I don't care about RFID chips. I don't care about Sunday worship. I don't care about all that. The only thing that I care about is that the people know as well that Jesus Christ is our friend, our Savior, our Lord, that also, in the same sense, the Antichrist is the papacy, is Pope Francis, is Pope Ratzinger from before, is Pope Boniface VIII of 1302. All the popes in succession, every one of them has been the Antichrist, the son of perdition, the man of sin, the little horn, and that is something that we have to get in our heads, you know? When you want to take the understanding of 603 score and 6 to it, fine for me. But don't lose sight of the important message that the papacy is the Antichrist. And I don't see P.D. Stewart writing that in one sentence here in this book. Do you, Brett? No, I don't. Do you, Michael? 
Unfortunately not, no. See? And this mm. is the message that has to be brought out. You're right. Because You're otherwise right. the people are still be caught in the lie that the Antichrist is some single person who will come somewhere in the end of time making a peace contract with the Jews and that by that replaying the 70th week of Daniel chapter 9 verses 24 through 27 which our Lord Jesus Christ fulfilled completely 2,000 years ago. The biggest deception since the Garden of Eden is the futurist lie of an Antichrist and I want to turn on that point and make that point at least in this broadcast i should that do in all broadcasts mm -hmm. that's what tom fress does mm -hmm. that the papacy is the antichrist that there is no future one that there is no uh, past one meaning that there is no preterism it has not been fulfilled yet the prophecy is being fulfilled as we are living it is not being fulfilled in the future but of course it comes to a conclusion in the future But the Antichrist is now, is already since at least 321, the time when Constantine hijacked Christianity and baptized the pagan Roman system with Christianity. The spirit of Antichrist is already spoken of in the time of Paul, the apostle, numerous times. And he warns of the Antichrist numerous times. And the, most, <clears throat> and the most explicit moment that he warns of it is in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. You cannot read a book like Code Word Babylon and claim to understand anything of this when you do not understand, when you do not from your heart protest every breath that you take that the papacy is the Antichrist. Simple as that. You have to get that understanding. Therefore, we can go on on this 600, three score and six till thing until the cows come home. <laughs> Understand that the papacy is the Antichrist is absolutely pivotal in understanding and reading this book. And what is the Antichrist? the fleshly personification of the spirit, Satan. I think you also would agree that uh, P.G. Stewart writes as an insider, okay? You would agree. Um, I got this suspicion that maybe he's very deep into Jesu Jesuits, maybe. He belongs also to some, to some inner circle or something. Because otherwise, uh, why doesn't he get the facts straight? Well, you know, I don't want to make any presumptions like the things that you are just doing right now. I just think that everybody has to think for themselves. And I well, return I to when I, I read, when I, <clears throat> sorry, when, when I read Rulers of Evil, I made the point very clear that when we were reading about the time of the founding of the uh, before the founding of the uh, of the nation uh, of uh, United States of America, that with the uh, general at that time of the Society of Jesus, Lorenzo Ricci, um, in 1772, the book was published or came out, and in 1773 it was officially published in France about Sun Tzu, the art of war. By a, uh, by a Roman Catholic and even by a Jesuit. Uh, uh, Amiot was his name, if I'm not mistaken. And Tapasorsi at that moment made the very clear point that no Jesuit is ever going to publish a book without the consent of the General of the Society of Jesus. So this book of the art of war of Sun Tzu, which was a lie, because there never was this general in China so many years ago. It is just Jesuitical policy put out before our eyes. They tell us what they do, how they do it, and because they put a fictional story about it, we don't believe it. But by their fruits, you will know them. So the question is, why can P.D. Stewart write this book and still live? That is more or less the question that you were asking, Michael, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And 
how can he publish books like this when we know that through Miranda Prozos and Intermerifica, all media, A-L-L, all media without any exception, is controlled by the Roman Catholic Church? Well, that is a very, very good question. Well, I think that there is a very big net the Roman Catholic Church throws out in controlling all media. But like with all the nets that a fisherman puts out to catch fish, there are also some fish that get away through the little mazes of the net. And maybe P.D. Stewart is just one of these little fish, like, for example, is Chick Publications, which I admire very much for their work. I mean, Jack Chick is uh, deceased right now, but David W. Daniels continues that work. And what they have put out the last, I don't know, 40 years, 50 years even, yeah, long before I ever dreamt of being saved by our Lord Jesus Christ, what they have put out and what they still put out in works, how is that possible without the quote-unquote consent of the Roman Catholic Church? I always said that I don't believe in ex-Jesuits, but what about Alberto Rivera? Do I believe that he is genuinely saved by Jesus Christ and really came out of that order? Or was that also a scam? Well, the point is, dear listener, that our Father in Heaven even uses the enemy to reach his agenda, his goal. He uses everyone for his purposes. Yeah? And sometimes he raises people up like P.D. Stewart who write these books and people like Jack Chick and David W. Daniels from Chick Publications and people like Alberto Rivera and people like um, Richard Bennett from BereanBeacon.org, a guy who was 21 years a pastor, a priest, sorry, a priest of the Roman Catholic Church. And what about uh, Charles Chiniqui? 40 years he has been in the Roman Catholic Church. I mean, his book is 50 years in the Church of Rome, but actually he was a priest for more than, uh, I think, 30 years or something, an actual priest of the Roman Catholic Church. What about those people? What about the people who we call today the Reformers, who all came out of the Roman Catholic Church, who were all working for the devil at one moment, but then God turned them around? I think that here and there we have to uh, understand that there is still... God in control of everything, and that there is divine intervention, and that there is, um, or how do they uh, call that, uh, divine uh, uh, providence, providence, right? Pro providence, is that mm -hmm. the, the word we use in English? Yeah. That there is divine providence uh, for things like this, for things like this used. So, uh, listen, um, I know a Jesuit coadjutor when I see him, and I have no trouble calling Eric John Phelps, a Jesuit coadjutor, because on his fruits, I have absolutely no knowledge about P.D. Stewart besides of reading this book and probably the next two books we will get from him. I mean, the second part of Code Word Babylon, and then finally, when it hopefully comes out one day, a Lord uh, Pope Francis, Lord of the World. But I have no knowledge of P.D. Stewart for the rest because I have never seen him in an interview on a, 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 in a video. I have never heard him in an interview on radio or whatever. I have never seen any printed of him uh, outside of yeah. these books. To me, yeah. this guy is a mystery, you know. So yeah, that, I don't. That's the, that's the yeah, point. So, yeah. yeah, no, no, that's not the point. You know that uh, that guy can be like you know Tapa Saucy, who was also um, not very quote unquote known in this world. Yeah until he put, put that book out. I mean, he put out books before them, but never even um, was he quote-unquote famous for, for what he wrote and never ever uh, suggested anybody that he was a Jesuit coadjutor and, uh, until Eric John Phelps came out with that. But Eric John Phelps, for example, and I, I'm sorry that I have to go into that figure, um, he is out in the open every day and he uh, accepts um, uh, interviews and, and all that stuff wherever he goes. But he, to me, accusing other people of being a coadjutor is one himself, you know? It's like the thief yeah. that holds up the bag of the woman that he just stole and says, uh, no, I just got it from that guy over there. You see? Yeah. <laughs> to not being well, put out especially, as, as a Especially himself. when you break down that doctrine of futurism, 
and you find out that Eric John Phelps is promoting futurism. I mean, and then, then it becomes Stewart obvious. <laughs> P.D. Stewart doesn't mention the Antichrist, that's correct, but he doesn't preach any, um, any biblical um, doctrine in this book anyway. Right, so, so that's a plus. Just, I think that I think that the listeners might get to thinking that we're trying to judge these people. No, this is discernment. You yes. know, this is the problem I have with my family. You know, especially my mother. She thinks that you know, well, you're judging now. Well, no, this is not about judgment per se. It's about discernment. What are you going to allow in your house? Are you going to allow? a whore in your house? Are you going to invite her in? I don't think so. If you're at least sober, you say, no, get, go, don't come near. Get out of here. You know, I'm not going to allow this false doctrine in my house. And, and I explain that to her and she finally gets it, you know? And I think that's the problem in America is that people think, well, maybe everywhere that, you know, well, you're judging now. Well, yeah, I'm judging, but it's discernment. There's a big difference. Well, I, I have even no trouble with judging because I am to judge the body of Christ, and I? Yeah. We are even to right. judge yeah. angels, aren't we? So why shouldn't I judge on the works? I don't judge the person. Right. I judge the works they do. But to me, that's discernment, Yerk. Yeah, okay. I, I'm just using another word to make it a little sure. bit more understandable for the people that when I say something about, like I said for Eric John Phelps, yep. I can judge him for teaching unbiblical futurism. I agree. Me too. That's judgment. That's not discernment. That's judgment. I sure. point my finger at him and I say, you are working for the devil's agenda when you preach. Preach. I put the uh, emphasis yep. on the word preaching that Jesus Christ did not fulfill Daniel's prophecy in chapter 9. That's right. That you is correct. are working for the devil, and that I can judge, yep. because I judge then with the word of God behind me, and that is the word that I will be judged by too, when I judge, because it says in the Bible, don't judge unless you be judged. Well, I don't have any trouble judging with the word of God, I have trouble judging with the word of man. That's the problem. Most people judge by their own standards, judge by the standards of man. I judge by the standard of God. If that is wrong, then God is wrong when he judges. Are we going to call God wrong for judging the people for the sins they committed? <laughs> I think not, do I? <laughs> How ridiculous can this get, you know? Well, the thing is, is that when you, when you speak the word... And, and you bring it up, it, it freaks people out, really. You know, I mean, this is, this is what's really going on. I mean, you know, when you confront, say, uh, a total stranger on the street about these biblical scenarios, you know, they're going to, of course, they're going to look at you like you're crazy or whatever, you know, because they're not really that familiar. Most people aren't familiar with even their own sin that they commit, you know? Until you bring it up, until you speak it. So, yeah, I mean, that's one of the most uh, really troubling aspects about uh, discernment is the moment you speak it, people tend to think you're judging when actually it's just your own personal steps. You know, you, you are judging, but it's really what you're sharing. You, do you see what I'm trying to say? Does it make sense, or am I still waking up here? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Good. Okay. For once, you are making sense this early in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good. Good. Great. All right. That's so, all I, I wanted to say. I, I, I hope, I hope, Michael, that you are not mad at me that I uh, didn't, um, uh, didn't agree with you fully uh, on the things no, that you no, said. No, no, no. That's that's I, not the that's not the point. I just, I just like every other. I, I can accept every other opinion uh, besides my, mine, my own. 
but uh, I like to to point out that he's not going the uh, the complete way to put it as the the title of the Antichrist. And yeah, so, but that is so true. That is so true. What you say there, and that is just my point that I am saying. Mm. I never yeah. see him mentioning yeah. that the papacy is the Antichrist, and that is what I think is missing of this book. But on the other hand, mm. uh, listen, did you read the book from Dave Hunt, the woman uh, the woman rides the beast, in German, mm -hmm. die Frau und das Tier? 500 no. pages long. No. A book that Tom Fress read also in, in, in uh, First Amendment Radio. I think it was in, I don't know when, which year it was. 2014 maybe, 2015, uh, somewhere in there. It was before I before I got to know him. It was before I got to know him. I, I don't know. It was between 2010 and 2015. Oh, okay. Uh, it may have yeah. been longer. Yeah, right. Got yeah, I, I, I don't care whenever it was. But, but, you know, this Dave Hunt, he was a futurist all his life. He didn't accept the papacy as being the Antichrist. He didn't teach us in his book, The Woman Rides the Beast. And he writes a book of 500 pages on Revelation 17. <laughs> yeah, it's really something, isn't it, Jörg? Yeah. yeah. You know, sometimes, sometimes the people don't see the tree, don't see the forest of all the trees. Or how do you say that? That's right. That's right. Uh, it's like Walt Stickel always used to say, uh, where you gonna uh, when you want to hide a tree, where do you plant it? Well, in the forest. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> because you got so many trees that you don't find that one. No. And sometimes the people are standing so close to that one tree that they can't even see that it is a tree they are standing in front of. That's right. You know? That's right. So this is why they are easily betrayed into this futurist deception. I mean, come on. Let's be honest. Um, us, three, uh, us three here, and Tom Fress next to us. I think I don't even have enough. Uh, I think I have even too many fingers on one hand <laughs> over to tell you that I know so oh. many people who have the same conception, the true conception of the Bible and the true conception of the conspiracy that is the biggest lie since the Garden of Eden, the biggest deception since the Garden of Eden. That is that the papacy is the Antichrist and that the 70th week of Daniel's prophecy in chapter 9 is completely fulfilled by our Lord Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago. I don't, I, I don't think that I know 10 people in this whole world who have that complete understanding. At least they didn't utter it to me. Mm -hmm. Right, right. I know that from Brett because yeah. I, brought, I put Brett to the test when I very first met him mm -hmm. in the very first broadcast on Hour of the Truth. Before that, I don't know if it yeah. was. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It was a private conversation before yeah. that, or it was on that yeah, broadcast. I don't know. But I put Brett to the test, and and he succeeded with the understanding of the Bible because he is led in the spirit. And there aren't many people that I can say absolutely that of, you know, mm -hmm. that have the really complete understanding of this subject and yeah. really get it. It's and a really I don't subtle think, one, yeah. It's so subtle. Yeah, and and, and I don't think that uh, P.D. Stewart get, got it, and I don't know. I don't want to judge on that, but I'm just making the point. When we say, by their fruits, you will know them, I can only say, well, I'm reading this book for 447 pages now, and I haven't read on one page that P.D. Stewart speaks about the papacy being the Antichrist. <laughs> <laughs> and that just pissed me off today. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm just saying, Yerk, you shouldn't be pissed because, really, uh, um, if it wasn't for Tom Fress of Inquisition Update and you, Yerk, um, putting out these videos, um, I don't know where I'd be today. I don't. I mean, I'd probably be out doing something related with music or something, still stuck in that rut that I was stuck in. You know, not studying my Bible and and uh, and discovering more of the truth, the historical truth that's been hid under the rug, you know, that yeah, these so. uh, high minded, uh, you know, intellectuals have, uh, you know, they've they've indoctrinated the whole world with this this leaven of the Pharisees, as far as I'm concerned. Well, I, of course, Brett. I, I mean, this is what the Bible says, right? I mean, yeah. we don't even need to discuss this. No. Nope. This is what the Bible says in Revelation chapter 17. Yep. So I'm when just saying, Yerk, that, 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 uh, that up, it's a very valid point you bring up. 
And, yeah, let uh, me just read this from the Bible. I think it is very absolutely difficult pivotal that we go a little bit into the Bible too sometimes. Yeah, it says, please. And there came one of the seven angels which had the seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. What is wine in the Bible stand for? Doctrine. Mm -hmm. When you are getting drunk with the wine of fornication, that means that you inhale the deception of the devil and that you are absor absorbing it, you can even say. This is what Revelation chapter 17 speaks about. So, of course, yeah, the deception is so big that everybody is caught in it. In Revelation 13, we speak about that no man can buy or sell less or say if he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. No man might buy or sell. Uh, no, dear listener, that also includes women, because man is speaking of man quote unquote kind as they say yeah, yeah god created right. man and he created the man and woman but a woman still is man because she comes from man so no man might buy or sell because no animal is going to buy or sell anything no it's man that does that so the bible is very very explicit and leaves very little up up for own interpretation that little that the Bible leaves up for own interpretation is what the Jesuits use to 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 uh, uh, to uh, how do you say that um, to corrupt you in your understanding mm -hmm. to um, mm -hmm. uh, irritate you what, what's the word um, deceive you in the understanding that you don't trust what the Bible itself says, but that you believe some quote-unquote man who tells you what the Bible actually is all about. Now, the Bible actually is all about that the son of petition, the man of sin, the little horn, is the papacy. And this is a measure that I didn't find in the book up to now, and we are on page 447, so I just wanted to make that point, because I think that when you read this book, Cold Road Babylon, when you read along with us, when you watch these videos, when you listen to the audios, and you don't have the understanding that the papacy always was, is, and will be the historical, biblical, and prophetic antichrist, then reading this book will actually be just a waste of time because you are taken by your nose by the Jesuitical deception of a future Antichrist anyway and you will not have the full understanding that you should have by uh, by reading this book. And that was my point. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. It's just the way I am. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, a lot of people are stuck in this futurist camp. It's not just a few. No, it's like I said, I don't have even 10 people that I could name that I know that have a complete understanding of the fulfillment of Daniel 70th week. And that's why I'm very, 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 very much looking forward to when Tom goes to that explanation that he wanted to probably do a series on on the First Amendment radio to explain word by word the fulfillment of Jesus Christ through the New Testament of every word that was prophesied in Daniel chapter nine. Wow, that's a, that's a, gonna be a very very important work right there. Very yeah, that's good point. that's very interesting. Very interesting, you know. I mean, yeah. we are doing the Bible study for the moment, and we are reading the New Testament for the moment. And Tom even said that he never understood the New Testament the way that he understands it now. Now he has taken away the glasses of the church. And now he sees that the papacy is, was, and always will be the biblical, historical, and prophetic Antichrist. Before he didn't he understood that, he read the Bible with, a com with complete other eyes, with a complete different understanding. And when you don't have that understanding, you are not even you are not reading the Bible with the same with that understanding. You, even books like this, Cold World Babylon, you read with a co complete different understanding. If you say that the Antichrist is just someone who comes in the future. 
You know, all our reading here is absolutely for the garbage can if you don't understand that the papacy is the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. When you even have one doubt on that, well, then switch off this video now. Yeah, that's right. Switch off the whole reading, too. Yeah. Because it doesn't, it's not going to help you at all. No, it's not going to help you. No, it will only confuse you, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you maybe, first you first have to gain the real yeah. biblical understanding of who the Antichrist is, and that Jesus Christ fulfilled Daniel's prophecy, chapter nine, completely, without yeah, but maybe, anything leaving up. Maybe P. D. Stewart reveals that in the second book. I don't know. I think the second book is more about nine eleven and stuff like that, as right. Tom spoke uh -huh. about in, in okay. his reading of the book but uh, mm -hmm. i don't i don't care i don't know i don't care we have done 447 pages and i haven't read that the papacy is the antichrist i only have to read 10 pages of romanism and the reformation from henry getting guinness and yeah. he writes 20 times that the papacy is the antichrist <laughs> you know and yeah. that's the difference that i want to make Huge that's, that's, difference, yeah. that's just the point that i want to bring to everybody's attention right James Edkin Wiley wrote a book, The Papacy is the Antichrist, a demonstration. Mm -hmm. um, there are books written about the subject, and I don't see any, um, any link to that kind of biblical understanding in the book Cold World Babylon. Don't get me wrong. I am not criticizing for that, but I'm just making the point that to me, that is a very important point to do so. I mean, what do you do when you read a book like this or any other book and you find a mistake in this? Yeah. You, you find the mistake that is so pivotal, yeah. that is so, <laughs> so important. Yeah. When Tom Fress read Foundations Under Attack, the book by Michael the Semlian, he was on Michael the Semlian over and over and over again for leaving out one little word from a Bible quote. But that one little word, well, that was the essence of the whole reading of the book. We are speaking of Second Thessalonians, and just let me get that up here in my Bible. Chapter 2, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2, uh, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who letteth will let until he be taken Ooh. out of the way, reads the quote in the book, The Foundations Under Attack. Big mistake. Now, what did I just read? Again, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. But what does the Bible say? What does the King James Bible teach? For the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. By leaving out the now, you open up the door for false doctrine. You open up the door for what we just read in Revelation 17, the wine that all the people of the earth got drunk with from the wine of the fornication of the whore. You leave that door open when you don't address these mistakes. And I'm going to tell you, because we are in this discussion already right now, when you turn to the next page, we will read on the one, two, three, on the fourth paragraph. In ancient times, the cycle bird of fire or phoenix, F-A-P-H-O-E-N-I-X, was worshipped as the bright and morning star. The old spelling of Phoenix, as I just spelled it, Shining One, is Phoenix, P-H-E-N-E-X, or F-E-N-E-X, Phoenix in Greek. Now it comes. It is interesting to note that Lucifer is also called the Son of the Morning, or Shining One, in Isaiah 14, verse 12. Now, where's the deception in this book? Do you get it, Brett? Still waking up, man. Do you get it, Michael? Not yet. No. Lucifer is also called the sun of the morning, the S-U-N of the morning. Mm -hmm. No, no. Ah. When you read Isaiah 14, chapter 12 in the King James mm -hmm. Bible, it reads to the me, sun. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? S 
O N Son of the Morning, not S U N Son of the Morning. How about that deception? Subtle, eh? Yes. So if you don't stand firm in the doctrine of the Bible and you read this book, what do you gain from it? Nothing. Nothing but confusion. Yeah. It just confuses you. Confusion. Yeah. Bad, bad, bad. Now, yes. what? Medici. What, where was that quote, Yerk, again? Page 448, in the middle of the page. In ancient times, the cycle of bird of fire or phoenix was worshipped as the bright and morning star. The old spelling of Phoenix, Shining One, is, so the old, uh, Phoenix we write today, P-H-O-E-N-I-X. Ah, I see. P-H-E-N-E-X or F-E-N-E-X. Ah. In, and in Isaiah, it says, Lucifer is called the S-U-N, the sun of the morning or shining one. No, he is called the S-O-N, this is in the book. next page of Code Word Barbell on 440. Yeah, yeah, that's what I Got told it. you. That's... Yeah, 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 yeah. It just takes a little while. You're... <laughs> yeah, but, but I'm just I'm just jumping to it because we probably why otherwise not? don't do it anyway. Yeah, yeah why because not? we already are 50 minutes in this in this thing and we are we are half a page away. Now from I that. see your point, Yerk. But I, I, yeah, I, I thank want you to make for, this point. for studying so... this a little bit beforehand <laughs> and yeah, pointing this I... out because uh, that's huge. That's huge. That's and you know, like... um, this isn't any surprise to me because you know we're we're flooded with these kinds of false uh, Bible um, interpretations, uh, like this one about the phoenix here, and you know, with all of this, uh, this uh, what do you call this? Um, these uh, little programs they set up, they call them. Um, Oh, I can't think of the word right apps? now. Well, no, 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 not apps, but um, ideologies, Yerk, is really what oh, I okay. want to say, because it's more okay. of a, um, a figur figurative principle that mm -hmm. once you have it set in your mind, it gets set in cement, and then you think it's the Bible truth, when in actual reality, it is not. Actually, I, I remember... Sorry to inter interfere. Please. I remember that uh, some pages ago he was he made a reference to another Bible, which wasn't the King James Bible. Yeah, it was or the any... Amplified Bible. Yeah. Yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. And well, so... you know, and we're all at different stages here in in our learning. And you know, P.D. Stewart isn't a part of our circle today in our discussion. But if he was, it would be interesting what he would have to say to defend himself. Well, listen, Brad, the same thing would be interesting to see what Michael the Semlian had to yes. answer when Tom Fress yes. addressed him in an email yes. about why did you leave out the word now, the one who now letteth. That's true. Because that's pivotal. Yes, it is. So when Michael the Semlian responded, yeah, I'm not responsible for what they print or something else, he never responded to any other email of Tom Fress. Mm. Where, where, where Tom Fress told him, how can I advise anybody to buy and read this book when you leave out a very important word of the King James Bible? I mean, what does it say in Revelation 22? Mm. Doesn't it say there that everybody who leaves out or adds to this word, will, his name will not be written in the book of life? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let let me see. Where is that here? Um, no, that's true. Verse nineteen. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Revelation chapter 1, right? No, this is Revelation chapter 22, verse oh, 19. 22, this is the, 22, the third 22. but last verse of the whole book. Oh, got it. Yeah? So you can, of course, say, well, this book just refers to the book of Revelation. I say this verse relates to the whole book of the Bible. Because oh, when you change right. something in this one quote-unquote book of Revelation, you change something in the Word of God anyway. Well, let's so, let's just think about about also that in the beginning 
of this chapter of Revelation that there is a blessing to those that read the prophecy. So. Oh, that's in uh, that's in Revelation chapter one. Huh? Yeah, that's right. That's what I was thinking of, you know, because I, I kind of yeah. set myself in that direction. Um, but, you know, when Blessed you're breaking down a book. And, and they yeah. that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Yeah, that's the point that you wanted to make. That's in Revelation 1, and I just read Revelation 22, verse 19. You see, and this is, to me, this is absolutely pivotal. So now, to to get a little bit, a summary of today's broadcast, which did not do many of the readings, I can still continue a little bit in the reading if you want me to, but the point is that I made that I did not, P.D. Stewart, see, write anything that the papacy is, was, and always will be the Antichrist of the Bible, the biblical, historical, and prophetic Antichrist. And then I turn to the next page, and I see that the quote of Isaiah 14.12 is twisted. There is a difference between the sun, S-U-N, of the morning and the sun of the morning. And you know why? Because in many corrupted Bibles, it is is set in Isaiah 14, 12, the bright and morning star. That's right. Lucifer is the bright and morning star. But that, again, is a title that is attributed in the book of Revelation to our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, they're switching it around. Switching it around. So if I do not catch this S-U-N, which is just one freaking letter in a book of more than 500 pages, and I don't catch this little, <laughs> this little. <laughs> oh, you're, that reminds me of, of your days with, uh, with Walt Stickle. And he would always say, S-U-N, it's, it's sun worship, S-U-N. And I remember you on the broadcast once saying, okay, I'm going to use S-U-N. <laughs> so yeah, you you've know, been well during, primed for this. Yeah, during my reading of yeah. um, Babylon Mystery Religion. Yes. That's what it was. I, I, for the biggest part of that reading, uh, shamefully, did not read the original book of Ralph Woodrow, but I read the book that Walt Stickle made out of it. He wrote the book, and every time when uh, Ralph Woodrow was referring to pagan, uh, pagan worship, pagan, pagan this, pagan that, he replaced pagan by S-U-N, sun worshippers, in his book. And he gave me the Word document of where he, quote unquote, translated the whole book of Ralph Woodrow. Yeah. Where every time when uh, paganism was mentioned, he turned it into S U N sun worship. And shamefully, before I came to the understanding that Walt Stiggle is a plagiarizer yeah. and not a man of God, as he gave himself out for in the beginning. I wrote, uh, I read most of this part of this book from his version. And just at the end, I think at about chapter 15, 16, 17, something, I got the idea that it was not him because he even left out one chapter. <laughs> yeah. Walt Sticker left out the chapter of three days and three nights. Oh, Why? Because he has a problem of understanding that, because Walt Stickel never read the Bible, never mm. understood the Bible. Mm. Yeah. Right. And I, of course, took it in because then I switched over to the real book. But still, this S-U-N sun worship is very important. Why is it important? Well, because, of course, Babylon is sun worship. Mm. Nimrod was it's the quote-unquote sun god. And the Pope is the representative of Nimrod today. So he is the vicar of the sun, S-U-N god, on this earth. That is correct. And therefore, the S-U-N is very important. But to say that in Isaiah 14.12, it is called the S-U-N of the morning is a blatant lie. Well, if he would have said it is interesting to note that the that Lucifer is also called in, in the corrupted version of the Bible, then it'd be all right. Because then he would note that there is a true version of the Bible. That's the problem, Rick. Yeah. So... 
Brett, I don't know if there's any Bible version out there that says these words in Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12, like the sun of the morning or shining one. I don't know. I have to check all the other Bibles. Yeah, there's but a Bible if that hub. Is, I can check that quick. But if that yeah. is the point, now let's come to the nitty-gritty of this whole discussion. Yep. If that is the point, then this book, Cold World Babylon, is not written on the foundation of the understanding of the 1611 authorized version of the King James Bible. Yeah, that's that's also my point. Right. Yep. Right. And because. that is what we build our authority on yeah. when we read books like this. Yeah, this so then the we are already from the beginning in disagreement yep. with the whole book. Right. Because yep. in the, the danger. Yep. In the that's mean, right. In the meantime. I I um I got uh, the uh, Jesaja chapter twelve from the Amplified Bible. Oh, chapter fourteen. And, oh, you did. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, chapter fourteen, fourteen, correct. And um, twelve. Yes. Yeah. yeah, correct. And there is uh, it's, it's quoted how you have fallen from heaven, O star of the morning. And then uh, light bringer, son of the dawn, son, S-O-N, S-O-N in the Amplified Bible. You have been cut down to the ground. You, have, you who have weakened the nations, in brackets, king of Babylon. Now, my point is that why is he using the Amplified Bible? Because the Amplified Bible isn't clearly quoting Lucifer, but P.D. Stewart is quoting Luf Lucifer on this page. Yes. And uh, on, on 448. So he must have known better and to use another Bible, which is uh, more uh, to, the, to the original Texas receptors, because the King James Bible is quoting Lucifer. And so that, that's my point. Why he's, is he using this Bible? Because he must have, he, he has knowledge which is, uh, which is more profound than this amplified Bible. So I don't get it. You see, that's my point. Well, that's the the problem that I had with this last quote. That's why I, uh, when we read that from the Amplified Bible, afterwards I said to Brett, okay, then in future I have to take every time when he quotes the Bible in his book, I have to make sure that I take the King James to see that we are speaking of the correct Bible. And mm -hmm. also in this paragraph on page 448, we are not speaking of a quote of the correct Bible. So yeah. when he takes another Bible as the basis of his authority to write this book, then I am in disagreement with the book because we have not the same foundation as mm -hmm. Michael the Semlian betrays the people when he leaves out the word now in 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 7 in his book Foundations Under Attack which Tom Fress very explicitly made the point over and over again during his reading then we have with P.D. Stewart here the same problem right yeah so, because P.D. Stewart is you, you not know, using I just, I just mm -hmm. want to. I just want to tell the to the to the people who are watching this video and listening. Mm -hmm. I think that most people don't even notice this little quote nope. unquote mistake I in agree. the book. I agree. And that that is why it is so important that you read this book with more than one person. Be what we are doing like here with three, and that a book reading like this is more than just reading the pages, but it is a reading and a discussion. Because I know there will be many, many people who say, oh, stop all that, blah, 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 just get to the point, read the book, tell us what the secret societies are all about. No! No! That's not my ministry. My ministry is to tell you that the papacy is the Antichrist, and from that point of view, you have to understand the whole world, and you have to understand all books that you are reading. And when you don't agree with me, then go where the sun don't shine. I don't care. But if you do, if you want to have the real truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth, then you come to our of the truth. And then you come to readings like Cold World Babylon that I'm doing here with Brett Norman and with Michael. That's my point. Thanks. I'm Eric. pissed. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's fine. But I had to say that. And, you know, let's let's close this down. We are done an hour anyway. And let's start all over again next time and read what does Vicarious Filii Di have to do with 603 score and 6. It is a very important message that is in here. But this message has to be based on the 1611 authorized Bible version of King James yep. and no other. Agreed. Agreed. Thank mm. you so much, Yerk, for for 
getting uh, getting us in line with uh, with the real truth here of the matter. And uh, I agree a hundred percent that this is not a small issue. This is gigantic. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And uh, any final comments? Yeah, it says in the Bible, don't change one 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 jot or one tittle. That's right. Okay. So, Michael the Semlian changed a whole world by a whole world by leaving a whole world out. P. D. Stewart only changes one letter, not one jot or one tittle shall be changed of my word. And when it will be changed you will not gain the right, the complete, and the correct understanding of whatever subject you're talking about. And what sense does it make that you are reading a book on exposing the most secret of secret societies on earth, the Jesuit order, when you don't have the foundation that will stand, that will let you stand firm, the 1611 King James Bible. What? do you have to stand on, if not that? And with that question, I close my contribution for today's broadcast. Michael? Yeah, thank you very much, Jörg. You made it absolutely clear. And uh, if you remember some uh, chapters ago, I asked you guys uh, why he's, why Peter Stewart is quoting the Amplified Bible. And uh, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, we, we agree all that uh, the King James Bible uh, is the correct one. And so, um, yeah, there, there's a contradiction in, in uh, my opinion. And, uh, hmm, yeah, I, uh, I'm very glad that uh, Jörg has summed it up so well. Thank you very much. Thank you both for joining us. And uh, thank you, listeners, for commenting. And we'll look forward to our next reading coming up very shortly, and we'll see you then. Thank you. Bye-bye.